Hey everyone, Zone of Amos here, and today I'm going to be nerding out with you guys, mainly the Genesis fans. And yes, I'm a Genesis fan myself, and I've been a fan of theirs for quite a long time. Now, I'm going to say right now that this video is probably going to get a lot of hate from the, the trio Genesis haters. Tell me your opinion, but don't give me hate, okay? This is meant to be a fun video. We are supposed to have a good time nerding out. Okay? <sighs> okay. So, I'm going to start off with this album on screen right now. From Genesis to Revelation. Yes. This is the album we're going to be talking about first. <sighs> and I'm going to tell you right now. If, you get, if, if someone out there loves that album, I'm sorry. I don't like it one bit. They they just sound way too much like they're trying they're trying to copy the Beatles or they're trying to be pop and it's just not good. Peter, Anthony, and I don't know. It's just not something I enjoy a lot. Hold on, I'm going to go on to Google right now. I'm going to look. Genesis to Revelation. Okay. I'm gonna make sure. Okay. Okay, so the, so the band's lineup was Peter Gabriel, Tony Banks, Anthony Phillips, Mike Rutherford, and John Silver on drums. Except on Silent Sun. Chris Stewart was on drums for Silent Sun. And, yeah, psychedelic pop, baroque pop, folk rock, and art rock. Now, as a Genesis fan, I really did not like that album. I listened to a few of the songs. It's not very good. Now, we're going to move on to this one that you see on screen right now. Trespass. Now, we have... A new lineup. Okay. We have Peter Gabriel, Anthony Phillips, Tony Banks, Mike Rutherford, and John Mayhew. John Mayhew did the drums, percussion, and vocals. Um, well, everyone did vocals. But Peter was the one who did... Um, the lead vocals, everyone else did backup vocals, like harmonize. And this one was classified as progressive rock. Okay. And one of their big one of the one that made was made that was made a single was uh the knife. And Sorry, but John Mayhew looks like um, Phil Collins. <laughs> um, I'm just going to look. I'm going to look right now. John May Mayhew. Okay. Uh, yeah. If I can find a good photo of him, I'll put it up right now. And if you aren't seeing it, then I couldn't find one. That, that was good. Okay? Okay. So, now the next one... Now, I'm gonna... Wait. Okay. So, I'm going to say something right now. To all the Genesis fans that love this album, me and my dad were never a big fan of uh, The Knife either. We were just never a huge fan of that song either, and it just never... It sounded like they were trying way too hard, in my opinion. They were trying too hard to be a hard rock band, and it just didn't work out too, too well. But... Can't do too much about my opinion, right? 
Okay, now we're going to move on to this album, Nursery Crime. And this one had a new lineup too. Peter Gabriel, Steve Hackett, Tony Banks, Mike Rutherford, and Phil Collins. This was the introduction of two new um, band members. Two pretty much permanent band members until 1975. Um, we had Steve Hackett replace Anthony Phillips. And we had Phil Collins replace the other two drummers. Which I think is pretty great. Because as a drummer, Phil Collins is absolutely stellar. And Steve Hackett is, again, still a guitarist. He's absolutely fantastic. And I love Phil Steve Hackett's guitaring. That, those, uh, Tony Banks and Steve Hackett just worked really nicely. Their, their solos were nice. Now, I haven't listened to a Nursery Crime in a while. Um... Whenever I go see the musical box, we always hear the musical box, like the song. We we we've heard "Return of the Giant Hogweed" before. We've we've heard uh, "Harold the Barrel," and that was about it. Musical box is another one of those songs that me and my dad never really liked. As a song, they're great, but as a Genesis song, they're not so great. And now we're gonna move on to this one. Which is probably my one of my favorite albums of all time, Foxtrot. Foxtrot was always was always one of my favorite albums. Especially this song right here, and I'll play it right now. Yeah. Well, I should probably just like whenever I mention a song that I do or don't like, I should just, you know, play it. Okay, so that one, that one that I just played was Watcher of the Skies, and that's a fantastic song. However, that's not my favorite song on the album, and my favorite song on the album is my favorite song of all time, which would be Can Utility and the Coastliners, and I'll play some now. Actually, you can go find it on my channel right now. It's, a, it's in the 432 hertz instead of 440. You must be so proud of me. Anyways, the lineup never changed. We had songs on side one. We had Watcher of the Skies, Timetable, Get Em Up by Friday, and Can Utility and the Coastliners. Side two was Horizons and Supper's Ready. Um, if it was in 9-8, it would be, it would be incredibly hard to count the time. My dad had hard problems trying to figure out the time because they said it's in 9-8 instead of 9-4-2. Now the song goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Not one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. In fact, it even goes like this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three. See? Now, some a lot of my viewers don't understand what time signatures are, so I don't even know why I'm talking about it. But yeah. Um, I just went in a huge giant tan tan tandem on Supper's Ready. But I'll play I'll play a snippet of it right now or before I even started talking. Okay. So the next one in the Genesis chronology was Genesis Live. And I'll put up put up a picture right here. Yeah, so this one was um, same lineup of same lineup as usual. They had Watcher of the Skies, Get Em Up by Friday, Return of the Giant Hogweed, The Musical Box, and The Knife. And if you get the the box set with this 
you'll get another you'll get another um, edition of it with uh, some stuff from the lamb which is really cool I like it and there's really nothing for me to say about this it's a pretty cool live show if you watch it live on YouTube you can find some stuff live on there now my probably my me and my dad's favorite album by Genesis is this one selling England by the pound and boy do we love this album we just love the hell out of this album it's such a great album to be it's such an album it's such a great album to listen to it's however dancing out with dancing with the moonlit night is absolutely stellar and I'll put up an image of the costume that Peter Gabriel right here um I know what I like in your wardrobe first or fifth which that song is literally about nothing it doesn't have a meaning more fool me which is probably not one of my favorite uh, songs on the album sorry um battle of epic forest is great after the ordeal is pretty good um, cinema show, fantastic. I mm, sort of know the solo. I have to practice it a little more. And um, Isle of Plenty, it's pretty cool. It's a li nice little snippet. And uh, Tony used, uh, you know, the ARP solo, the ARP pro soloist. Okay, the next album, The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway, which was the last... Peter Gabriel album. Last Peter Gabriel. And it's a pretty great album, too. Right now, I am in love with uh, The Chamber of 32 Doors, um, The Lamia, um, um, The Colony of Slipperman. Such great songs. I mean, the main sequences are fantastic, too. Like uh, Fly on the Windshield. That's a good one. I'm not even looking at the page right now. I mean, I know these songs are pretty much by heart. And it's really nice to, you know, kind of talk to you guys about this because I never get to do something like this. I mean, I also want to hear you guys' opinion on this. The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway. I want to see that tour so bad by the musical box. It's insane how much I want to watch it. Now we move on to 1976. With the trick of the tail. Dance on a volcano, entangled squonk, madman moon, robbery, robbery, assault and battery, ripples, a trick of the tail, and lazendos. Awesome. All great. Ripples is great. I love the instrumental section on that, on that, on that song. Dance on a volcano has, is always a great one. It's always so cool to listen to. Los Endos. Oh my gosh, that's great. Um, however, this one is labeled as progressive rock and art rock. Now, I just think it's just progressive rock. However, I mean, if uh, Peter Gabriel stayed for one more album, it would probably be another masterpiece as well. This one's pretty great. It's not necessarily a masterpiece, but it's great. Wind and Weathering is one of those albums I absolutely praise. However, there are some not so good songs like um, Your Own Special Way. One for the Vine is pretty good. Um, but yeah, Your Own Special Way is just not one of my, you know, not one of those things that I really liked. And if I'm correct, it is written by Rutherford. Okay. Um, 11th Earl of Mars, such a great song. Um, it's written by Tony Banks, Steve Hackett, and Mike Rutherford. Walk Gorilla is written by Phil Collins and Banks. One for the Vine is written by Banks. All in a Mouse's Night is written by Banks. Blood on the Roof Talks, Hack Hackett and Collins. S Unquiet Sleepers for the, un Unquiet Slumbers for the Sleepers, Hackett and Rutherford. In That Quiet Earth. Hackett, Rutherford, Banks, and Collins, so the entire lineup. And Afterglow was written by Banks. Now, I absolutely, I adore Afterglow. I don't know why. It's such a great, beautiful song. However, I 
I would have to say that that's probably their last great album. Well, one of their last fantastic albums. And... Spot the Pigeon was one of their uh, EPs that were still had um, Steve Hackett. And... It's just, oh my gosh, my hair's in the way. Pigeons is a pretty cool song. I don't know why. It's just it's such, a, it, I like that song. It's good. Seconds out. And that was based, that was, that was it. That was Steve Hackett's last seeing on Genesis. And then we have, and then there were three. Which I think is a pretty gr- is a pretty good album. Um, as for me, Down and Out is absolutely one hundred percent prog. That is prog of another mind. It's, Jesus, sorry. Um, it's definitely prog to an extent. I mean, it would have been great if uh, Steve Packard was there, but. Mike Rutherford's guitar playing isn't bad. It's not good, but it isn't bad. But it's still a fantastic frog song. Tony Banks is still awesome. And Phil Collins is doing it hard with that. That's not what she said. <laughs> follow You, Follow Me is a pretty good pop song. It's nice. I like listening to it. Many too many. Not very good. I like Snowbound. Those are the only two songs that I really like from that album. And then we have Duke. Duke. Mm. The last great song album. The last great one. Misunderstanding is a, is a good pop song. Behind the Lines, Duchess, Guide Vocals, Man of Our Times. Great songs. Hefe's, eh, pretty good. Turn It On Again is good. Alone Tonight, yeah. Cold de sac that's pretty prog. Um, Please Don't Ask is a pop song. Duke's Travels and Duke's End is pretty good. Evidence of Autumn is good. And Open Door is not very good. And then we have Abacab. Uh, uh, I'm sorry? But this is the fall of Genesis. This was the fall. This was the end of Great Genesis. There are maybe one song, there's maybe one or two songs on here that are okay, but there were pretty much no instrumental pieces, and it was just not good. Three by three, and I'll have a picture right here. If you don't know what that is, Paper Late, you might recall, in Me in Brazil. Yeah, not great at all. It's just pop. <sighs> Three Sides Live. Turn it on again. Dodo and Lurker. Abacab. Eh. Behind the Lines, yeah. Duchess, yeah. Me and Sarah Jane, no. Follow You, Follow Me, yes. Misunderstanding, eh. In the cage, at Lee? Yeah. Oh, sorry. One for the vine. Yeah. Fountain of Salmasses and it. Watcher of the skies. That was basically it. Those were the three sides live. And the fourth side wasn't live. I, I don't know. I thought that, the, yeah. I don't know. And then the Genesis album came out, or Mama. And this one was pop and art rock. Now there are a couple of cool, so- good songs on this one, like "Home by the Sea," "Second Home by the Sea," and that was basically it. That was it. Taking it all too hard is okay. "Illegal Alien" is so bad. "Mom is o- isn't bad, but it's not good. That's all is all right. 
And I don't even know the other ones because I never even bothered to listen to the rest of the album. <laughs> Sorry. And Invisible Touch. Now I know a few of you, especially one in particular, and you know who you are if you're watching this. You would agree with me that this is probably their worst album of all time. Pop rock, synth pop, and art rock. We have Invisible Touch, which was a number one world hit around the world, which is great for them, but it sucks. Tonight, Tonight, Tonight is alright. Land of Confusion sucks. Sorry. In Too Deep is alright. Anything she does. Domino is pretty good. That was a alright song. Throwing it all away. The Brazilian? Okay, yeah, okay, sure. Sure. But where's the complicated music that Tony Banks is used to? Where's the... Well, yeah. We Can't Dance. Yeah, alright. Jesus, no son of mine, that's an alright song. Jesus, he knows me. No. I don't even know half of these. Hold on my heart. I love that song, actually. I like that song. I do like that song. It's a beautiful song. I don't know why. I just love that song. The Way We Walk, uh, which is a live album. The Way We Walk, another live album. And Calling All Stations. Calling All Stations was kind of the return of Better Genesis. They had a new lineup, which was Ray Wilson, Ta Tony Banks, and Mike Rutherford. Calling All Stations is a pretty good song. Congo is alright. Shipwreck is okay. Alien Afternoon. Haven't listened to that. Not About Us. Eh. One Man's Fool. All of these are okay songs, but, you know. Yeah. The Archive is pretty cool. I've listened to some of it. I really do like the... um. Twilight Ale House. That's really good. I like that. That's really cool. If I can, if I can um, put some, like a snippet of it right here, maybe. I don't know. Sounds good. Turn it again. Turn it on again. The hits was you know it was basically just all the hits that they had. Eh, and you know it's an all right album. Some of the songs are good. Some of the songs are. Cool. Crap. And Archive Number 2 is pretty cool. I listened to some of it. It's pretty good on the shoreline. It's a pretty good song. The Platinum Collection. Nice. And the Box Sets. Yeah, that's pretty cool. All the Box Sets. Live Over Europe is an okay tour, but it would have been so much better if um, Steve Hackett was there instead of Daryl Sturmer. No offense to Daryl Sturmer. And it would have been better if Phil Collins was there. I mean, yeah, Peter Gabriel. Let's be honest. Live collection, uh, box set, 70 to 75, 73 to 2007, Genesis movie box, and archive. And I'll put a you know picture up here. But yeah, just amazing to see how Genesis went from being such a fantastic band to being a crap band to being an okay band again to being on tour and not so great. I feel bad for some of the people who were um, who are out there and just like you're such a Genesis hater. I'm like no, they're my favorite band of all time. And I'm criticizing them a little bit. I'm I'm just sharing my opinion on the band and I'm trying to make trying to make work of what I can and a lot of their stuff is good and a lot of their stuff is bad. But yeah, I know that this I'll, this video is going to be copywritten the shit. But whatever you do, um, 
uh, Atlantic Records. Please don't take this video down. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked it, please leave a like, share, and subscribe. Peace. Do you all need another lesson? Do you even know what you're doing? That movie will be the last time you'll ever see it. Do I have to explain it over and over? Or is it only the best you listen to things? Are you going to listen? Or are you just like... Yes.